Hi there, I'm Dr. John Michael Lau and this time I'll be doing a laboratory demo on the diseases of the liver and the biliary tract. Okay. And before we start on uh, uh, looking at the scanning at the slides, uh, I'll be uh, orienting you about the continuum of liver injury. Okay, what, uh, what is uh, flashed in front of you is basically the the usual pattern of injury uh, when a liver gets injured okay so from a normal liver okay when a liver becomes exposed to a certain injury for example a mild injury okay it undergoes fatty change okay that's the mildest form of um, injury that is manifested by the liver however when it is exposed to a higher degree of, of, of injury okay, from a fatty change, okay, the liver becomes inflamed. That is what we call hepatitis. Okay? So for example, uh, this is very true for cases of alcoholism. So for ex uh, when, 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 the, when a, 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 an alcoholic person drinks for example, um, uh, f uh, a span of uh, short period of time, okay, the alcoholic person develops fatty change in the liver or what we call steatosis. However, after a long period of time, the liver becomes inflamed and what we, uh, that is what we call alcoholic hepatitis. However, there are also cases from a normal liver, the liver becomes severely exposed to a certain injury to a certain uh, um, injurious st stimulus as what we mentioned before alcohol or whatever whatever um, chemicals okay it becomes inflamed right there but of course it takes a lot of uh, exposure and you know there's a time element and after hepatitis, repeated attacks makes the liver become cirrhotic. When you hear the word cirrhotic, it just means that an organ has undergone some fibrosis. Okay, some of the tissues have become uh, have become invaded with collagen fibers. Okay, so what we, that is what we call cirrhosis. And not only cirrhosis is, is derived from hepatitis, you can also have cirrhosis immediately from steatosis, from a severely fatty liver going to cirrhosis. Okay? And from cirrhosis, you see nodules, okay? fibrosis, in between the fibrosis, there are formation of nodules. One of those nodules becomes hyperplastic, okay, and develops into a mass, what we call hepatocellular carcinoma. So and this is the continuum of the gross manifestations of liver injury. Okay, this is a very important slide. So first off, we have a case of a five-year-old boy who had bronchopneumonia and unluckily the patient died. Upon autopsy, the liver was found to be enlarged and yellowish, flabby and soft, and the cut surface was greasy. Okay? You might wonder why a very in innocent five-year-old boy has developed fatty liver because as we as we uh, the, the usual uh, uh, knowledge that we have is that a, a person develops fatty liver out of a fatty diet but there's an exception you can develop fatty liver from what what's the reason why this patient here developed a fatty liver anyone reason is 
It's because of not alcoholism but malnutrition, undernutrition. Okay. So, let's describe the liver here is greasy, fatty, okay? Slimy. Okay? Cut surface. Again, very greasy. And of course, it has undergone hepatomegaly. Microscopically, you see widespread cytoplasmic vacuolization of hepatocytes. That is what we call fatty change. Of course, the nuclei is pushed to one side. It is because of the, the lipid vacuole has occupied a lot of the portion of the hepatocyte, pushing the nucleus to one side. And there's still maintenance of the lobular pattern. Okay? You already know about the central lobule, the, what do you call this, uh, um, portal lobule, central lobule, okay? You have to review that uh, in uh, your histology. So this is a slide um, scanning view of a fatty liver, okay? So you see, what, what you, can you appreciate here? You see the radial arrangement of the hepatocytes. Okay, you can also see the central vein here, what we call as the hepatic vein. You can appreciate the portal triad. Okay, let's go back. Portal triad. See, this is the portal vein. Most probably, this is the hepatic art. Uh, no, this is the bile duct. Okay, most likely, this is the. And one of the arteries here is the portal. Um, hepatic artery okay so what composes the portal triad first you have the portal vein portal then hepatic artery and the bile duct okay so hepatic vein again is different from portal vein Hepat portal vein supplies the liver central vein or the hepatic vein drains the liver okay so um, again this is a picture showing fatty change but what's what's new here is that the stain okay emphasize some fibrosis the stain is what they call as a mason trichome stain okay it is blue and it presents as a some fibrosis even though uh, we just see fatty change still some fibrosis okay this is not yet cirrhosis but some fibrosis okay presenting as a chicken wire fence pattern next okay so i think this is one actual slide that we have and this is the central vein okay or the hepatic vein and uh, this these are still normal hepatocytes okay radially radially arranged okay and these are hepatocytes that have undergone fatty change okay you see pushing of the nu the nuclei nucleus into one side okay this is the nucleus okay the nucleus of course, we can still see normal hepatocytes in between, okay? There. This is a f closer view, okay? Fatty change. So, very clear, no? You see the lipid vacuole. In cases of um, fatty change developing into alcoholic for example alcoholic hepatitis okay and this is a picture of alcoholic hepatitis not only you can appreciate some fatty change such as this one but you can see also um, these structures okay? these are what we call as malory bodies 
Okay? These are um, destroyed destroyed cytoplasmic structures. Okay? With a rope-like appearance. And we also see another structure here. It, this is what we call as an apoptotic hepatocyte. Okay? Or what, what they describe as a ballooning degeneration. So, malleable bodies, alcoholic hepatitis. Okay. So, that, that was it. That was for steatosis or fatty change. So, we see a, a um, 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 the lipid vacuole occupying uh, the whole or almost the whole part of the cytoplasm of the hepatocyte. So, um, what you have to study there is what's the usual cause of fatty change. So, for that five-year-old boy, malnutrition. No one will answer alcoholism. Next. This is a case of a 58-year-old male who had um, congestive heart failure. Of course, when patient had um, congestive heart failure, this can also develop into respiratory complications. And the patient died. Okay? Remember our lesson on uh, right-sided heart failure? This is it. Okay? So, left-sided heart failure, progressing to right-sided heart failure. And from the right-sided heart failure, it, no, what, what, we, what, what did we learn about right-sided heart failure? When the right side of the heart is, has failed, you have a damming of the blood back into the previous chamber, back into the vena cava, uh, back into the portal circulation okay into the liver okay thus you have what we call as a chronic passive because it's passive no the heart stops pumping it's chronic because it, it does not occur right there and then it occurs after a long period of time okay grossly the liver is enlarged and heavy deep red and boggy consistency and the cut surface is oozing with blood not make appearance so and this not make appearance is described as you have an intense red brown centrilobular zones and the tan or pale peripheral regions this is not the liver this is a nutmeg so in the nutmeg or nut you see areas that are dark and pale so this is the liver very much looks like a nutmeg and you see dark areas these are red blood cells leaking out of the sinusoids okay you see the uh what is the pattern of necrosis here it is what we call as centrilobular hemorrhagic necrosis you see red blood cells leaking out of the sinusoids because of congestion okay microscopically you see mar markedly dilated central vein and um, surrounding sinusoids filled with blood okay and atrophic hepatocytes fatty change or necrosis can also see that okay it's an incidental finding you may find it there or not okay and you see here these are red blood cells leaking out these are still normal hepatocytes okay but you see the red portion are red blood cells leaking out of the sinusoid sinusoids are the what um um drainage no drainage of the hepatocytes okay these are uh these are like venules okay on the hepatocytes okay and these are also red blood cells leaking out of the sinusoids this is a i think this is a portal vein 
okay and you see these cells okay these are red blood cells these are hepatocytes and these what the the structures are the cells here that leak out are the red blood cells okay making the liver take more pink pink stain okay what we call eosinophilic and you also see this is a uh, closer view okay these are where are the hepatocytes uh, where are the these are hepatocytes okay and the red blood cells that are leaking out okay so passive congestion we see leaking out of the red blood cells okay so let's go to cirrhosis any questions okay so cirrhosis you have a case of a 50 year old male who was a uh, heavy drinker of course after a long period of time developed recurrent ascites ascites is a retention of fluid in the peritoneum jaundice and emaciation okay or loss of weight massive develop massive hematemesis and melina so the the patient um, vomited blood okay not from the respiratory but from the gi and and um defecated um blood dark tarry stools okay and died okay so this is what this is a um, clinical uh, picture of what you see here this is a this is ascites okay aside from that what do you see what do you, what are these veins this is caput medusae because it is believed that the veins are engorged very much engorged that it forms the head of medusa so caput medusae okay so those are just a few of the manifestations of cirrhosis um please uh read on the clinical manifestations of the cirrhosis this is very important because uh when you know this you'll be able to detect patients or suspect patients with cirrhosis okay so you can um like a patient walking on the road a, a, a man walking on the road with a um, big belly okay you know looking like a pregnant person but of course he's a man he can't be pregnant so most likely the patient has cirrhosis okay you can suspect you can only suspect okay grossly the liver is contracted firm to hard okay of course no when uh, um because in cirrhosis not only um we mentioned before it the liver has become fibrotic okay the aside from that uh, uh you know um fibrosis has encroached to the whole liver that is the that is the aim of cirrhosis okay and the liver shrinks so therefore when uh, upon ultrasound when the radiologist sees a cirrhotic liver or a shrunken liver he will suspect that that is cirrhotic okay and finally nodular yellow brown and cut surface has uniform nodules surrounded by gray white fibrous tissue this is what i was talking about okay this is a cirrhotic liver very much looking like a chicharon no 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 it's not chicharon this was uh, a um the specimen that we have had 
uh, way back in Urhelio. Okay? We don't have this anymore in, in the present Maham unless uh, there, um, a new specimen will be acquired. Okay, and and um, our teacher before told us that um, a, a cirrhotic liver very much looks like a an almond roca, okay? Or what? Safari? You know sa safari? Safari? It's a rice crispy uh, chocolate, okay? It very much looks like that, okay? This is not the liver. This is almond roca, and this is a cirrhotic liver very much um, shrunken compact and nodular nodular okay so please take note a nodular liver is a cirrhotic liver many nodules um the the degree of nodularity depends also on the on the type of um etiologic agent okay for example this one so this is described uh, this is uh this is uh cirrhosis secondary to bile overflow or inspissation of bile okay and we have another case uh of uh another case okay another type of cirrhosis which is secondary to to uh, bile okay another one this is cirrhosis secondary to viral hepatitis okay histologically the the cirrhotic liver has distorted architecture with pseudolobules okay we uh, we learned before we have fibrosis okay these fibrosis create new lobules okay it does not follow the pattern of the portal lobules we also see uh, swollen hepatocytes with fatty change and with wide bands of portal fibrosis. The predominant uh, inflammatory infiltrate here are lymphocytes. So this is what I was talking about. You can still see fatty change. Okay. Uh, of course, this is understandable because the patient before the patient is an alcoholic patient. Okay, of course, in alcoholism, the patient has started with um, fatty liver. Okay? And you see development of pseudolobules. This, this is uh, fibrosis. Okay? Okay, let's take a closer view. This is fibrosis. Okay? Sorry. Fibrosis. Okay? These are still, I think, normal hepatocytes, but divided by fibrosis. And this is what we call as a pseudolobule. And um, a specific um, term uh, of um, cirrhosis or um, nodules uh, that, are, that's, uh, that measures uh, less than 3 mm is what we call as micronodular. So micronodular cirrhosis, less than 3 mm. Okay, it is also called as Lanek cirrhosis. Most probably, the the scientist that discovered this type is Lanek. Okay, and this is more often than not is found in alcoholic cirrhosis. So micronodular cirrhosis, more often than not, I'm not saying um, all all uh, all uh, micronodular cirrhosis is caused uh, is caused by alcoholism, but more often than not, it can be found. It is found in alcoholic liver okay this is a fatty change you see fibrosis you see um, some fibrosis in between okay so cirrhosis you see shrunken liver you see pseudolobules okay you see nodules grossly okay any questions okay next is a uh, case of a 40 year old male with high grade fever develop right right upper quadrant pain okay of um, most likely this patient had a an infection okay and with a rigid abdomen okay acute abdomen okay with jaundice alternating diarrhea and constipation history 
So this is a very important part of the history. And patient died. So this is a case of amoebic abscess. Okay? So amoeba, this is caused by amoeba. So what's the cause of amoeba? It is what? Uh, what what's the etiologic agent? It's entamoeba histolytica. Okay, very good. So it is ingested, okay, as a cyst and it develops into trophocytes in the large intestine. Okay? And the trophozoites invade uh, the different organs such as the liver and the and the lungs. Okay. And what's particular with this amoebic abscess is that in one liver it occurs solitarily, singularly, one big abscess. Okay? That was uh previous one was through ultrasound. And this one too. Okay, I think this is MRI because it's cross section or CT scan, I don't know. Okay. Then grossly the liver the liver has an exudate, pasty reddish brown. Okay? And you see a liver abscess. That time uh the li the abscess has got ruptured. Okay, this is the abscess. This is another abscess also. Okay, so more often than not, um, it occurs okay singularly, but not multiple. Maybe one or two, but not multiple. A big abscess. And this is what we call as what? How do we describe the pa the the exudate? It's a pasty reddish uh, brown um, um, exudate. Okay, what we call as anchovy like ex. Uh, anchovy sauce like exudate so that's the description of of um, amoebic abscess so this is the which one is the abscess or uh, yeah anchovy no so this is the abscess okay this is the anchovy sauce okay so this looks dirt more dirty than this one okay but yeah, it's, I'm just joking Histologically, the abscess uh, is seen with uh, infiltrated with mononuclear cell infiltrates, then fibroblastic reaction at the periphery with amoebic amoebic trophocytes. Okay, but you can uh, um, here. This is this is one abscess. Okay. Actually, the whole slide is an abscess. Okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is not, not, this is not the, this is um, part of the abscess. No? The whole, the whole uh, slide is the abscess because when you really look at the slide, you see a dirty slide. You see, um, um, what you call this, uh, hepatocytes, okay, being, you know, scattered all around. And you see uh, mononuclear infiltrates, and I think if you're lucky enough, I think this is a cyst, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but the m more predominant stage stage of the amoeba here is a trophozoite. Okay, so maybe this is a I I don't know maybe a cyst. Okay, so. If you look at the slide, it's very dirty because the whole specimen is an abscess. Okay, compare it to this another type of abscess. Okay, any question? What's the etiologic agent? Entamoeba histolytica. Next, a case of a six-year-old boy, a malnourished one who had multiple infections. Okay, malnourished. Most likely, number one, skin infections, respiratory infection, hand developed septicemia and died. Okay? So, in contrast to um, the previous type of abscess, okay, 
the liver here of the, of the patient also developed abscess, okay? But in contrast to the previous case, the liver of this patient developed multiple abscesses. So this is the gross picture, okay? With a, let's read again. You see a greenish exudate, green, real, yellow exudate. So you have multiple abscess. One, two, three, four. So many. Okay. So this is, um, this is uh, what is uh, different. No, what is different um, from uh, from from amoebic abscess because uh, pyogenic abscess occurs multiple, multiple. And it's caused by what have you? You have Staphylococcus aureus, the most common etiologic agent, and the Streptococcus family, Pyogenes, okay, okay, and other types of um, uh, bacterial infections. Histologically, the abscess is well circumscribed, surrounded by fibroblasts and capillaries, and with a fibrino purulent exudate at the center <coughs> so this is um, this this um, pyogenic abscess is what we what we usually uh, which it's, it's typical it's a typical abscess that we see in um, in other organs as well okay like this so in one slide you can appreciate many abscesses because it is multiple. Okay? You can this is these are still normal hepatocytes around surrounding a abscess. What's the predominant um, infiltrate? It's neutrophils. And these are two abscesses. Okay? So it is the it is the body's um, um, mode of warding off infection. No? It traps the infection inside the abscess. These are the inflammatory infiltrates, neutrophils. Okay, any questions? So, what's the etiologic agent? Many. Staphylococcus and, and many, many. So, Please read on the etiologic agent of pyogenic abscess. So next, you have uh, you have a case of 36-year-old female who developed typhoid fever. What's the cause of typhoid fever? It's what? What's the cause of typhoid fever? It's Salmonella typhi. Developed septic shock and died. So grossly, the liver is necrotic. And histologically, um, you see uh, patchy and random areas of necrosis with what's the hallmark here is you have typhoid nodules. So uh, previously, the abscess, you see pyogenic abscess, an abscess, uh, uh, um, amoebic abscess, abscess again. Here you see typhoid nodules. Again, these are... Uh, these are aggregates of inflammatory infiltrates okay what's the predominant infiltrates here you see lymphocytes but in the typhoid nodules you see reticuloendothelial cells and histocytes reticuloendothelial cells these are macrophages okay so here so you um this case needs a uh, an imagination good imagination so um what is peculiar here in um, typhoid nodules is that the inflammatory infiltrates are in between the normal hepatocytes so it's here this one this one is also one nodule another okay For, and from from the far 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 Point of point of view or scanning view, you see no, you see uh, you can appreciate the nodules. This one too. This is one typhoid nodule. So um, maybe in the exam, you have to discern if it's an abscess 
or a nodule? So if it's an abscess, is it pyogenic or amoebic? Okay, another typhoid nodule. Okay. So I think it's it's um easier because in pyogenic abscess you, you see localization of inflammatory infiltrates in the infl infl in the inflammatory infiltrates you will not see any maybe maybe just uh, a few hepatocytes but predominantly that's occupied by inflammatory infiltrates okay but here you see hepatocytes in between okay, any questions so etiologic agent of um of what you call this um typhoid okay is salmonella typhi next a case of a 43 year old female non-alcoholic okay develop sensorial changes okay maybe de delirium okay and had massive abdominal enlargement okay so most likely can this is a case of again a patient developing cirrhosis but what is the cause it is negative for it is negative for alcohol the patient is not alcoholic so it's not caused by alcohol the patient is negative for hepatitis b and circumoval pre precipitation test I, I think this is the med tech stuff okay so again this patient is negative for hepatitis b because it hepatitis b is also one common cause of hep uh, hepato uh, hepatic cirrhosis okay and even hepatocellular carcinoma in asians okay so negative so let's um all other causes ruled out so let's investigate patient develop portal hypertension with hepatic hematemesis okay so by the way what's the cause of this hematemesis this is caused by hematemesis vomiting of blood this is caused by portal hypertension why because the liver has developed what cirrhosis okay so from cirrhosis develop, developing portal hypertension okay causing uh, formation of collateral channels causing formation of esophageal varices what have you so in the GI you see esophageal varices in the in the anal part you see hemorrhoids okay so what are the other collateral circulations okay secondary to portal hypertension so the patient this is a a, a this is ascites okay but what is really the cause it is caused by so take note uh, when investigating you should also include where the patient was coming from okay so this is very common in the philippines is found in it's very common in mindoro okay leite okay and other areas as well okay schistosoma this is the etiologic agent of of cirrhosis in this case okay but uh for the sake of exam when you see um when you see uh, this particular case you brand is this as schistosomiasis okay so you have a schistosoma entering your system okay it enters as a sarcaria okay to the gi uh, in, not not into the gi into the skin okay and from and it goes into the circulation or blood stream okay and you see a um from cercaria the adult form male and female reproduce eggs okay so schistosoma mansoni schistosoma japonicum schistosoma hematobium so mansoni is the but most common japonicum Okay. Hematobium, which causes bladder cancer. Okay. Again, uh, 
it's uh, the the intermediate host is the snail but the definitive host here is the human okay so this is what we call as uh, the eternal copulation which is the woman the one with the ovary okay this is the male the, s the thinner one grossly delivered is enlarged nodular cut surface so again this is uh, schistosomiasis developing into cirrhosis with pipe stem fibrosis here that is fi pipe stem fibrosis histologically um, you see what's the hallmark here you see schistosoma eggs and schistosoma eggs are uh, very much um, identifiable because it takes up the the violet stain no? it's colored violet okay but but if it's another another stain okay or if it's not stained then you have to check really check if that's really an egg okay so portal area found in the portal areas in the periphery of the lobules with the following inflammatory infiltrates and these are what we call as the schistosoma eggs okay schistosomiasis again you see fibrosis you also see um, lobules pseudolobules okay what do you call this these are red blood cells red blood cells that becomes congested because of obstruction in the portal circulation by the schistosoma eggs okay again schistosoma schistosomiasis schistosoma eggs you see congestion again schistosoma eggs any other questions okay the next case is a woman who is um, obese with intermittent vague right upper quadrant pain we, uh, who had developed uh, episodic epigastric distress and vomiting unrelieved by antacids no? in this case um, one uh, differential diagnosis most likely is acute gastritis okay, or hyperacidity okay? but it does not it, it's not relieved by the medications so it must be another thing okay take note the woman is obese and female okay so what are the four f's of uh of um four f's of cholecystitis okay risk high risk for um cholecystite um cholecystitis you have fat female okay 40 42 okay and fecund oh, or or, or a highly productive um highly reproductive okay multiple gallstones i think uh um those the four s pertain to cholelithiasis okay this case is cholecystitis secondary to obstruction secondary to gallstones patient underwent cholecystectomy grossly the bladder the gallbladder is enlarged and is found to have 10 black stones okay and the cut surface outside it's very smooth but inside it's very thickened and rough okay so when you see black stones this is what we call as pigment stones okay but when you see this one yellow golden brown stones this is what we call as cholesterol stones but in the actual uh, situation more often than not you will see mixed type of gallstones which is it's a mix between the pigment you, you can appreciate the, the pigment and the cholesterol stones in one okay 
histologically the mucosa uh, is uh, described to to be hyperplastic with hyperplastic glands and the uh, lamina propria we you see uh, lymphocytes and um, fibrosis you also see mucosal glands so this is one hallmark of chronic cholecystitis you see um, proliferation of glands in the lamina propria or the muscularis area what we call as rokitansky askov sinuses so this is what i want to see this is the mucosa okay how do you describe the epithelium it's a columnar okay cuboidal to columnar you see these 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 are glands in between these are rokitansky askov sinuses this one this is a hallmark of um, chronic cholecystitis so chronic inflammation of the gallbladder again this is a gallbladder okay this one is a rokitansky askov sinus and you also see inflammatory infiltrates the predominant infiltrate a here is lymphocytes okay again another closer view so you see rokitansky asco sinuses you see uh what they call this um lymphocytes okay that's uh um, very particular for chronic cholecystitis okay so next any questions so next case is a case of a 49 year old female who developed uh oh, okay patient also had gallstones okay uh however this case is not cholecystitis but this is what we call as biliary cirrhosis the liver is normal size greenish brown finely nodular so why do you think there is a greenish brown uh, that the liver is greenish brown it's because of the leaking out of bile secondary to obstruction of the gallstones the, the texture is what is they describe as pig skin okay so this is biliary cirrhosis there are two types of biliary cirrhosis when when biliary cirrhosis occurs secondary to an autoimmune disease or it is an autoimmune biliary cirrhosis this is what we call as primary biliary cirrhosis it is an autoimmune destruction of the bile ducts okay here the bile ducts that one but when you have a gallstone secondary to gallstone or cholecystitis or parasitic infection obstructing the flow of bile and and then destroys the bile ducts it's what we call as secondary biliary cirrhosis okay okay so logically again the manifestation here is very much similar to the the usual liver cirrhosis or hepatic cirrhosis but um for the sake of exam Okay, when you see this case we take it separately this is what we call as biliary cirrhosis so you see pseudolobules see what's another hall the hallmark of biliary cirrhosis is what we see what we call as bile duct proliferation okay the bile ducts become um, multiple okay not because of hyperplasia or or uh, metaplasia or what no it's secondary to destruction okay so here let's go back so the bile ducts becomes destroyed okay destruction of bile ducts you see and it is described as biliary proliferation how ironic no? and uh, you see mononuclear infiltrates and you see swollen hepatocytes with bile pigments so this is what we call as this is this is uh, the biliary proliferation okay the liver is green okay and nodular 
Okay? So, in the portal areas, you see lots of bile ducts. How do you identify? Because the epithelium is cuboidal. Okay? Here, closer view. These are not schistosoma eggs because in our slide, the schistosoma eggs are colored violet. Okay? But do not, that's just a clue, okay? Do not, do not uh, uh, diagnose or identify um, using the stain, okay? Because if you use another stain, you cannot um, identify anymore. But again, these are bile duct proliferation, okay? Biliary cirrhosis. You see also fibrosis also, pseudolobules. Again, these are biliary proliferation. And around the proliferation, you see also lymphocytic infiltration. Okay? This is described as florid duct lesion. Again, this is also a picture of biliary cirrhosis. This one, another biliary proliferation. Okay. Okay. Any questions? So biliary cirrhosis secondary to bile, bile build up, bile um, outflow. Um, what do you call this? Uh, if it's autoimmune, then that's primary. If it's secondary to some uh, other previous cause, it's secondary biliary cirrhosis. And what's the hallmark? It's biliary proliferation. The tenth case is a case of a 45 year old male who developed upper abdominal pain with abdominal en enlargement that's ascites with jaundice body malay anorexia weight loss that's emaciation palpable tender liver nodular that's cirrhosis and a palpable spleen so theref therefore the patient had hepatosplenomegaly with a positive fluid wave that is positive for ascites Elevated direct and indirect bilirubin, bilirubin, okay. Because of obstruction, uh, there are many causes for an elevated bilirubin. Okay, you can have um, secondary to conjugation, um, defective conjugation. Okay, uh, that is what we call as uh, 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 what they call this. Um, okay. Or, or second is what we have what is sec um, secondary to increase in what hemolysis okay that can also be caused uh, that can also cause increase in direct uh, in, in indirect bilirubin okay we, we will talk about that in clean path okay and the patient had low albumin so the patient if the patient has low albumin there are two causes maybe malnutrition second if there is defective production of albumin from the liver and this might be the most most more likely cause of low albumin in this case patient had elevated transaminases destruction of hepatocytes and positive for hepatitis b okay so do you know where we are going we're leading to so a patient that is that had hepatitis b um developing to cirrhosis okay okay and i think in this slide this is this is the most um the, the most um maximum idea that we can get uh, from this slide okay we still have to investigate grossly the the the, the liver has uh, okay we said it hepatosplenomegaly acetic fluid the liver has a massive tan mass okay so not only that the patient had a cirrhotic liver but with a mass with areas of green cholestasis okay with hemorrhage he hemorrhage okay and necrosis necrotic areas so what's uh, intriguing here is the massive tan mass what's that with a portal vein thrombus okay but among these findings the most intriguing is the massive tan mass what is that 
Okay? So, this is the mass. This is not the mass. This is the gallbladder. This is the mass. Okay? Microscopically, the patient uh, has... Um, uh, the, the liver is divided into neoplastic nodules, very much similar to the pseudolobules that is characteristic um, in uh, cirrhosis. Okay? And you see cords and sheets of polygonal cells. So neoplastic, of course, we see hepatocytes with, look at the nucleus, undergoing meta uh, undergoing uh um different stages of cellular division okay so you see hyperchromatic nuclei and mitotic figures okay regenerative pseudolobules okay so this is this is fibrosis and this is a A, the hepatocytes these are um, one pseudolobule okay look at it inside hepatocytes undergoing neoplastic change what is this yellow this is bilirubin okay look at it inside you see n the nucleus of the cells having different stages of mitosis okay So most likely, if it's in the middle, what this is what we call as. If the, if the mitotic figures or the chromosomes are in the middle, this is what we call as metaphase. Okay, and and um, meta metaplastic a, a neoplastic um, hepatocyte also has different. Um, different stages of um, development okay from you see when when you can still appreciate the hepatocytes despite of the mitotic figures this is still well differentiated however in other cases okay oh, oh, in, in 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 well differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma you can also see bile okay however in other cases in poorly differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma, you will not anymore appreciate um, the hepatocytes and the bile. Okay. See? Stages of mitosis. Okay. So, any questions? So, this is hepatocellular carcinoma secondary to hepatitis B. Okay. Simply put. Okay. So next is, I think this is an extra case, but um, it's also important. Okay, this is carcinoma again of the bile ducts, cholangiocarcinoma. Okay. So you see carcinoma of the bile ducts encroaching into the metastasizing into the liver okay another carcinoma involving um, I involving the the biliary epithelium is what we call as the gallbladder carcinoma okay it can be uh, if you read it in the book it, ca it can be endophytic or inside the the mucosa or exophytic which is outside or in the serosa okay and both of them because these are biliary epithelium okay you can see proliferation of glands in the lamina propria okay so very very much looks look alike okay so you have to read the case if you encounter this case again so this is cholangiocarcinoma you see these are glands and the 
epithelium is has mitotic figures okay tumor cells again very very similar okay that one too okay this is a biliary epithelium with that has undergone tumor transformation and have a great day